Hey, good morning. It is Monday, the 6th of September. <clears throat> I had a beautiful day yesterday. It's been nice to be able to really relax and kind of be here. Why wouldn't you want to be here? Look at that. Had a nice long lunch yesterday. Walked for about another hour. Stopped and took a nap for an hour. Actually put my tent up so I didn't have any bees or flies or anything buzzing me. That was pretty nice. Um, so a beautiful mountain goat yesterday. He was up kind of on the zipper above Glacier Pass. Eh, somewhere in there. After I met that. But beautiful. There's grouse right there. Um, saw several deer yesterday. One of them was pretty big. Actually, kind of thought it was an elk at first. But it was a female all by herself. She was just a big girl. Got a little cold last night. Hiking anyway. So I thought it was going to be really cold at the campsite. But I woke up in the middle of the night and it was too hot. I took some layers off. But it was pretty windy. So everything had kind of a fine layer of silty dust. This one maybe. It is absolutely stunning out here. <clears throat> I was thinking about a lot about the different you know things you experience on the trail. You know, where's your favorite campsite or what was the best sunset or sunrise or best lunch spot or best view or whatever. And it's really hard to narrow them down. There's been so many. It's one of the interesting things about a through hike is just every day you're seeing so much stuff and I'm glad I've taken you know literally over a thousand pictures as I can go back through and remember where I went what I saw who was there what happened all that kind of stuff but tomorrow um, we'll hit the border and then start heading back towards Hearts Pass again. And then on the 8th, the day after tomorrow, we'll have a short hike, probably 10, 15 miles back to Hearts Pass. And then get picked up and head down to Seattle. And that'll be really weird. Not to be in Seattle, I love Seattle, but um, to not be, to know that you're done with the trail. And I think it's gonna take a while to, for all that to sink in. And I've talked a good bit to Brown Sugar and Planner about it, because they've both hiked the AT. And what was it like adjusting off of the trail? And everybody's kind of thinking about that. This, this is, an amazing opportunity in life and I've got so much other stuff going on and not trail life that this has just been a wonderful respite it's not like you're hiding or avoiding but you're just able to be here in the midst of all that other stuff this is here so I'm trying to figure out how to bank this stuff, you know, like a battery. How to keep it in my head and keep it in my spirit. <clears throat> this is, really is a trip of a lifetime. I can't even imagine how many times, how many days, how many hours, how many weeks I spent planning and thinking about doing this trail for years. I mean, it's, 
This has been on my mind, I think, since 1992. The first time I heard about the PCT. 92, 93, somewhere in there. But a long time. Here I am. I'm almost done. And I don't want it to end. Your body is just so adapted and your mind is so adapted to being here. And it's hard, you know, when it's cold and wet and rainy and everything's wet. But It's still worth it. I mean, it's it is such just an amazing place. We've talked a lot as well about other hikes to do, and of course the other long trails always come into the conversation. We talked a lot about the Appalachian Trail because so many people around us have done it, and I've met very few people that have done the CDT or Continental Divide Trail. But I imagine that in the years to come, the CDT will become much more popular because so much of the Pacific Crest Trail has burned that it's just destroyed. And there'll be reroutes, they'll find a way around, but it won't be the same. It's just been a, a really destructive year for the trail. But when I think about and yeah, do I want to do another through hike? Yeah, I do. And they, they say usually that people don't want to at the end of a hike. Yeah, that desire usually comes later. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I flew to Maine and started walking south, <laughs> if I could make it through the AT this year. And that's not going to happen. I'm not even going to try. But... Yeah, I definitely want to keep doing this. And why wouldn't I? My body feels great. I mean, it's... You need 2,500 foot climbs like it's nothing. You're just adapted, you know? And you, you've got your your systems and your way of doing things. And you know what works for you. And I figured out, you know, I've, I learned a lot about fueling. Like how to provide nutrition for my body. I mean, so much so that I really kind of want to go back to ultra running. Look at these. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I want to go back to ultra running to see how much better I could do with this knowledge that I have now about how my body works with nutrition. I thought I knew. I didn't. Not like I do now. But I, it's just... Huh. Yeah. I don't want to go home. I just want to keep doing this. This is home. This is home. I think one of the things I love about it, and I feel so comfortable here is it's just, it's like it's part of your DNA. And especially being up here in the North Cascades. It feels so good to be here. I've been on this trail before. David and I hiked this southbound. We think in 98 maybe, somewhere back there. We're not exactly sure of the date or year, but I don't remember specific details of the trail that long ago. I just remember the feeling of it. And I was so excited to get back up here. This whole trip, I've been excited to be here. And I'm here. And it's amazing. I just love everything about it. Even when the weather's hard, and it's blowing sideways and raining and you can't see 10 feet, I, I still love it. It still feels good to be here. And check out this other side of the ridge here. It's going to be all clouded up. Yeah, look at that. I 
is gorgeous. The lake's down there. Light filtering through. I'm not. Right, watch out! Watch out!